Okay, today is section 2.2.2. Some nice symmetry there. Uh, and I'm going to do a little bit of review first, though. So here's a parabola. And here is its vertex down here. It's at 3, comma, negative 1. And then I've got another spot here at, let's say, 5, comma, 6. The question is, can you write me the equation that would go through those two points? And it starts with this, y equals, and you got to have this memorized. It starts with an a, very good. And then what's next in here? x minus h squared plus k. You add an h and a k in there at least. There you go. There's your starting formula. Hopefully you'll have that memorized because that's not going to be given to you. That, again, this test is happening on Wednesday at this time. So you have about 48 hours. And this is a review question. I'm going to pause for a second while I try this one. Okay, so here's how you should have done this one. First of all, my advice, advice has been to put all the points in all at once. This goes in for the vertex. That goes in for the x and the y. So uh, if this is x and y and this is the vertex, it's really h and k. See how I labeled those for myself to know where to put them? So the... The y I want is right there. 6 equals a. I don't know a. That's what I'm solving for. Now the x, which is 5, minus the h, which is finally getting to the vertex here. The h is 3. i got to be careful. This is the opposite of this number. And I have it that way. Minus 3 instead of a plus 3. And then this minus 1 at the end. And don't forget the squared part. All right, 6 equals 5 minus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4. 4a, four or a4, minus 1. Now you add 1. 7 equals 4a. A must be 7 fourths. Raise your hand if you've got 7 fourths for a. Awesome. Now I could see a kid getting this far and saying, sweet, figured it out, and leaving it. And the answer would be wrong. Because the point is, can you write the whole equation? So the whole equation is y equals 7 fourths. And then this is x, and then i got to put in the vertex again, which is minus 3 squared minus 1. There's your final answer. How many of you had that on your paper also? Okay, good. If you didn't have that, that's, that's the point of this problem, is giving me an equation for this parabola right here. And that's the equation for the parabola. All that is is the stretch factor. Okay, that is a typical review question. Next, um, I want to do a regression. Now, we are, we've done linear regressions and got tested on them like twice. This is a quadratic question, but we're going to move today into the next level, which is instead of quadratic, we're just going to change that, move that up a notch to a power function. So do you remember what power functions are? Is this a power function? Good, and that would be a simple one that has a power of what? Four, and what's this thing? It's something that's got three letters. A COV, what's that stand for? Anybody know? Constant of variation. All right, so the constant of variation in this case is the three. Okay. Now, of course, your problem won't probably be that easy, all right? You're going to probably have a weirder one. So let's look at a couple weird ones. y equals 1 over 3x to the fifth. Is this a power function? And the answer is yes. The first thing one should do is rewrite it so that this x to the fifth isn't on the bottom because you won't be able to get the right answer unless you rewrite it so that that x to the fifth can be on the top. But if you just go like this, you have not, all you've done is move it from the bottom to the top. Do you remember if it moves from the bottom to the top, then it has to change signs? The power has to change sign. All right. So then do you get that that's really a one-third x to the negative five? If you can't rewrite that like that, you are not going to pass this section of the test with, on power functions. Okay? So let's have you try another one like that. y equals 
Uh, one ninth x to the negative fourth. Please rewrite that in the normal standard form and then tell me if it is a power function, what is its power and what is its constant of variation? I'll pause for a second. So I was asked, would this have not qualified as a polynomial? Because it's not a polynomial, because it has a weird power. But it is a power function. Power functions can have negative powers. So it's just polynomials that can't have weird powers like that. All right, so this one. Miss CH, what did you get for a new equation? Perfect. All we did is move this up to the top, and if you do that, you got to change its sign of its power. So there we go. And it is looks like a nice, clean power function, and that's the power. And that's the COV. You with me so far? Okay, let's do another one like that. Wait. K is a constant, by the way. Um... You'd have to look at the directions and see what they consider constants. K is a constant. So is this a power function? And if so, what is its power? And what is its constant of variation? First step. Act like the k is a number. Remember, if k is a constant, you act like it's a number, like, like 7. Okay? So then this would be just dealing with the constant part. It would be 1 ninth times k. Okay? The constant doesn't move around. The y needs to come to the top and become y to the negative second. Now, could I put it up here? Yeah, but I don't have to put it up there. I can put it at the end like this. So then it sort of separates it out nicely because that is your COV and that is your power. Maybe you had that one right. Okay, good. This constant thing, just it's don't throw it in with the variable. Throw it in with the constant. All right. One more that we use for constant is C a lot. So what if it said this? Okay, you should have written this as y equals c over 5, x to the negative one third, or negative third, sorry. There, there's not much rewriting to do. That's your constant of variation, that's your power. Any questions on that? Yes. Yes, one fifth c and c over 5 are identical, so yes. Those are both okay. Yes. This part right here was the constant. You take numbers that are clearly numbers, and those are part of your constant. And then anything that's defined as a constant, like k is a constant and c is a constant, those are also numbers. So this is like, let's say I said k was equal to 7. All it means is 1 over 9 times 7, 1 over 63. All right, so the variable part will tell you what the power is. Okay, all right, so back to this one. And this was the constant, 
a variation, and this one was the power. All right. Now let's do one where we actually put one into a calculator as a power function. So to do that, I'd like you to pull up your worksheet 2.2.2. Actually, before we do that, sorry, one more thing, and then we can just kind of give you a practice on the worksheet. Before you go to the worksheet, please, on your blank notability doc, I want you to have a sketch of a lot of these parent functions that we've been talking about because we really, I know you know how to do y equals x, for instance. That is just the line like this, y equals x. But would you know how to graph y equals x to the one-half power? Good. Some people remember. Do you recognize it if I asked you to do this, which is actually identical? You get where I'm going with that? Sketch me that one again. Remind me. Turn it my way. I'll tell you if you got it right. That's the one. Yep. 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 Remember this parent function, don't you? Good. Good. Yep. Good. Yep. 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 Uh, glare, can you tilt it? There you go. Good. Thank you. Good. 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 Okay. You guys are remembering it now. So this one's square root function. Looks like this. Okay, what if I wanted to flip this left-right? Where would I put the negative if I wanted to flip left-right? Nope. Inside. Now, how on earth, if this is supposed to be like this, how on earth am I supposed to put the negative on the inside on this one? All right, I'd like you to take your calculator, and I'd like you to graph for me y equals x to the 0.5. It's a lot faster than doing fraction 1 slash 2, okay? So just graph y equals x to the 0.5. I want you to play with the negative and figure out how you could make this thing flip left, right. Again, your graph wants to look like that if you flip it left, right. Where do you need to put the negative? Looks like you found it. Hit y equals. All right. Okay. Now, I know a lot of you guys made it look like this by typing this, y equals negative x to the one-half power. And that's a left-right flip. It's all, nothing wrong with that. It does work. My question is, would you please try putting this in, y equals x to the negative 0.5 power, and see what that looks like? You'll need a parenthesis, perhaps, around that. I'm not certain, but I'm assuming you'd need a parenthesis around that. Next year's. All right. What happened? Did it do a left-right flip at all? What did it do? Did it do an up-down, like a normal up-down flip? Did it go like this? No. no. Where did it go to? Is it kind of like that? Okay. All right. Well, what is that? That is a function that would look like this. We'll talk about that more later today. Um, but for right now, just know that putting that negative up in that exponent 
uh, does some strange stuff to it. If you have y equals square root of x, which you could write like that, like this, that's the same thing. If you want to make a left-right flip, you go on the inside. If you want to make an up-down flip, you go on the outside. Like that. Okay, that all still works. But when you put a negative on the exponent in here, I just want you to know that that does something completely different. All right. Now let's talk about some parent uh, graphs that we're expecting you to know for this worksheet. I'm going to pause for a second. Okay, so here's our worksheet, and we got a whole bunch of colorful graph options there, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H. Okay. Now, I want to kind of analyze which of these answers, you know, like make sure you understand, like, what to look for. Okay, here's four equations. It says, match the equation to one of the curves labeled in the figure. If you knew what this was, y equals x to the fourth, that would be the parent function. Then you'd want to flip it up, down, which is also the stuff on the outside is vertical on the outside, right? Low. We do want to do a vertical flip, and we want to shrink it. But you'd have to know what x to the fourth looks like in the first place. Do you have that one memorized, y equals x to the fourth? I'll give you a hint. It's pretty much identical to x squared, except it's narrower. Everybody on your calculator, just for a second, see what it looks like. Get rid of that first graph you did, and instead replace it with x to the fourth. Doesn't it pretty much just look like a parabola, except a little narrower, maybe? Because when you put in 1, you go 1 to the fourth power, which is 1. Put in 2, you go 2 to the fourth power, 2 comma 16. It's just like super steep. Would you, are you doing this? Okay, good. All right, so uh, my next one is this guy, x to the negative fifth. Everybody graph x to the negative fifth. Now, do you know what x to the fifth would look like? If x to the fourth looks like this, which is a lot like x squared, and by the way, x to the sixth would look pretty much like this also, and x to the eighth would look like that also. Are you getting my point? Anything that's even would kind of look like a parabola. How about all the odd ones, like x to the fifth, just plain x to the fifth? Actually, I, I made a mistake in having you graph x to the negative fifth. Just graph x to the fifth. x to the fifth, I hope, it looked like that. Did it? Okay, and so would x to the seventh and x to the ninth. And are you getting my point? All right, so all the odd ones kind of look like that. All the even ones kind of look like a parabola. But what happens to it when you throw in that negative? I'm going to pause for a second and demo it on my calculator. Okay, I'm going to hit graph and have it re-graph this thing, get out of that mode, and then go to graph. Ah, it still stays on there. Okay, well, the blue one is the x to the fifth graph. The red one is the x to the negative fifth graph. Does that ring a bell? Do you remember that one that has the two parts to it? All right, I bet you a lot of you have kind of forgotten what this means. When you have a negative, you put a throw in a negative into your power. Do you get that means one over? How about this? Let's try this. Uh, three to the third. No, let's do a three to the second power. So don't even type it in. Do you get that if I type this into my calculator, three to the second power, that that would be nine? What's 3 to the negative second? Everybody just go out to your, not your graphing screen, go to your regular screen, type in y, or just not even y equals, just type in 3 to the negative second power. What is it? 
What's the answer? 0.111111. You know what fraction that is? One nine. Do you get how that's three to the negative second is really like one over three to the second, which is one over nine, which is point one 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 one. So what is the negative doing? It's putting one over whatever you have. So this right here, this x to the negative fifth is saying, I want you to graph one over x to the fifth. And do you remember those deals with bigger on bottom, bigger on top, same on both? This one's a bigger on the bottom, so it's got an asymptote at y equals zero. And then it's one of these kind of graphs. They're all, the fraction ones were always like this. And they'd have asymptotes like this and this. Okay. All right, so back to looking at our worksheet again. Mm, that one. If we're going to kind of have an idea of what these graphs look like, you have to have an idea of what these different things do. So if I'm going to, like, figure this one out, do you get that that's kind of like square root of x? to the one-fourth power. It's not the square root, though. It's the what root? Fourth root. And so that means that basically, you remember what square roots look like? Here's the square root graph. Fourth root graph, just a little tighter. OK, so like squared graph, here's the squared graph. To the fourth graph, it's a little bit tighter. Okay, so back to worksheet. Now, let's see if we can start pulling it together to see which graph has to be which then. All right, so if I want to find this one up here, do you know what that x to the fourth looked like again? It was like it's really tight parabola. And then what's that going to do to it? Stretch or shrink? Come on, stay with me. Stretch or shrink? That's going to shrink it a little bit. What's that negative do? flips it. So now it's a flipped over parabola. It's, it's shrunk a little bit. So it looks kind of like that. But if you look up above, none of them have this left side of the axis. So it's pretty much like this. And it's not this part because it got flipped. So basically it looks something like that. You need to find one up there that kind of matches that. And there is one. It's obviously one of the ones that's down on the bottom part because it's been flipped. I'm not going to tell you which one. You have to figure that out. Okay. Next, we have this one. Do you get that this is like one half x, which I hope you would know is just a, wait, sorry, to the fifth. So that's x to the fifth graph, which is kind of this odd one, except it's been shrunk a little bit. So basically it just kind of like goes, those are hard to shrink. All right. So it's something like that. And then wait a minute, what does that do to it? It puts a 1 over it, which makes it all completely different. Then all of a sudden, it's one of those fraction functions. So if it's a 1 over x to the fifth, 1 over x to the fifth, and the stretch factor becomes almost irrelevant, then I just have to take a squish, or sorry, a uh, x to the fifth, it's like y equals 0 for an asymptote. So there's an asymptote running through here. And then is it shifted left or right, up or down? Nope. So it's basically like one of these graphs. So which of these, the black, the red, blue, or green, looks kind of like this guy right here? Notice I don't have this left side of the graph, so I don't need that at all. I'm hoping you're able to tell that it's the black, the blue, the red, or the green. One of those is like that one. All right, my last thought on this is, I know, these are a little stressful and scary. But do you get that I've told you many, many, many times that on graphing that the xy chart is your friend? And that you can figure out any of these with an xy chart? So let me just show you this for a second. If I wanted to figure this one out with an xy chart, okay, if I go x and y and I graph it and I go, okay, well, what can I put in for x? 
The easiest thing of all to put in for x would be 0, because 0 to anything would be 0, so 0 go with 0. So I ask myself, which of these graphs goes with 0, 0? Then I would stick in some numbers like 2, and then I'd stick in maybe 3, and I'd have to go 2 to the 5th power. Holy crap, 2 to the 5th. Uh, and then I have to take half of it, and I have to put... Anyway, it, it, this would also help you if you want to do your x, y chart to figure out your graph. Okay, so much to learn today. We've had a lot of easy days, but this one's not. All right, so now that's our graphing part of this. The last thing we have to do should be your happy place. It's to do a regression equation. So everybody type in on your calculator this data. Hit stat and type it in. Um, and wait a minute, I'm sorry. Not that one, because that one's too easy, honestly. Cubic regression, it's going to be the same exact thing as you've done before, except picking quad reg, you'd pick what? Cube reg, cubic regression. Okay, so that'll be easy for you to do at home. Let's do the power regression one. Everybody type that one into your calculator. All right. Now, if you've got your data in there, I'm double checking mine. 2, 2, 4 goes with 0.5. 6 goes with 0.222. That's, by the way, 2 ninths. 8 goes with 1 eighth. 10 goes with 0 0.08. Okay. So now, if I'm going to do a power regression, I'm going to go to stat, calculate. There's lin reg, quad reg, cube reg, quart reg, lin reg, again with a plus bx. LN reg, looks like I need to go further. I haven't seen power regression yet. Okay, ooh, PWR. PWR seems like power, doesn't it? All right, so how many of you already had that idea and already knew that you should go there? Good. It is pretty intuitive on this. Now I'm going to set mine. You'd say L1, comma L2, comma Y1, unless you have the new operating system like this. In which case you go, you get down to this line right here, and you go to vars, y vars, function, y1, and then go to calculate. All right. So A is 7.999999553. That's pretty much 8, right, if you were going to round it. And then B is negative 2 points. This is pretty much negative 2. And what does that mean? That means my equation is y equals 8x to the negative 2. Does that look like a power equation? What's the constant of variation then if you round it? 8. And what's the power? Negative 2. Make sense? Yes. It's a good question. It depends on the problem. If we just asked for the equation, because this one, if you round it even out to this many places, you'd have to round to 8. You know what I mean? Now, you're right that I have you type it in exactly, because if you want to figure out something from this power equation, if you round it even a little bit, the answer is going to be up. So if only question was, what's the equation for it? I would have said that equation I wrote in red would be fine. But if you're actually doing a calculation with this equation, that's why we have the exact number typed in automatically right there so that we don't have to, like, retype all of those decimals in. Okay, so then what could you be asked? 
Well, they could either give you an X or they could give you a Y. On number 16, do they actually ask you a question about it? Okay. All right. If they did, if they just said uh, X is equal to, um, how about something between 6 and 8? Let's say X is equal to 7. You'd be able to look in your chart. I'm going to go to table. Oops, I did graph by accident. Ah. All right. There we go. Okay, and I got to find uh, seven. Ooh, I got mine counting by something weird. You may remember your table settings were being adjusted a lot. So if we want to have our tables just start at seven, that would make sense, right? And then I can count by something normal like ones. And then I go to my table. And this is where x is 7, y would be 0.16327. Okay? And if they'd have said, I'm going to give you a y value of 0 0.08, well, that actually already lines up with 10 right there. So I could say uh, 0 0.04734. And then you'd go down here and go, oh, okay, well, 04734 goes with x equals 13. It's the same process as the other quadratic equation. Just power reg instead of quadratic reg instead of cubic reg instead. Of, you know, they're all the same basic concept. All right, so I feel like we don't need to spend any more time on that because basically if you get linear regressions, the very first one we did, they're all just like each other on this. Okay, so let's go back to the worksheet then. And... Let's see if there's any other parts that uh, you need to be prepared for. Uh, here we go. Find the power regression equation. Okay, so you'd type in all this data and then use it to predict the light intensity at a distance of 1.7. The only hard part is figuring out, did they tell you an X or did they tell you a Y? And if you just look at your data, I guess it isn't super easy to tell just by looking at your data. Like looking at these numbers, I could use 1.7 in that zone, or I could use 1.7 in this zone, either way. So which one is it? You have to look close. And it says, predicting the light intensity. That means I don't have the light intensity. So that means I must have the distance. So basically, they must be telling me 1.7 meters is my distance, and therefore they're telling me that x is 1.7 and therefore you're supposed to figure out the other thing the why all right okay let's go back to the beginning of the worksheet uh and i talked over the graphing section which is definitely the worst part i will talk about that more with you tomorrow um and hopefully have better explanations for you than what i gave you earlier today uh, but this, I hope this is, again, an easy part, the constant of variation. It does say to graph it in status, domain, and range. All right, well, I hope you caught on now that the, the even ones, x to the second, x to the fourth, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, all look like this. So it looks something like that. Now, that's just a quick sketch of it. If you wanted an actual graph, you'd probably have to use your calculator to give you an exact graph. I suppose you could always make an xy chart. Put in, like, x is 1. 1 to the 4th is 1, times 2 is 2, 1 comma 2. Put in a 2, 2 to the 4th is 16, 16 times 2 is 32, 2 comma 32. Those would be tough to graph without a calculator because the numbers get so big so quick. All right, and say this domain and range. Well, if I know it looks like this, it's domain and range is easy. Domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity, and its range is from 0 to infinity. So there's an example for number 1. All right. Uh, let's see if there's anything I can have you skip on this thing. Those are 1, 2, 3, and 4 are all different and all could be on tests, so I don't want to take any of those out. Transformations in the correct order. We've done so many of these kind of problems in the past. Why don't you skip 5 uh, and 6? Just try the trickier ones, 7 and 8. So you can skip problems 5 and 6 and 9. 5, 6, and 9 can all be skipped. 5, 6, and 9. Graphing ones, it's just matching it. So I think you can handle four questions of that. Then you got a, a few different kinds of regressions to do, including those new power regressions. It's just PWR, and otherwise it's basically the same process as it was before. 
Okay, so that's all I got for you for today.